Well, one of the pioneers of sports talk radio on Thursday announced that he will be retiring soon. Norm Hitchkiss of The Ticket will do his last regularly scheduled show on Friday from 10 to noon alongside Donovan Lewis. Norm has called The Ticket home for the past 23 years or so. Muddy's been a fixture on DFW radio and television for nearly half a century. Norm Thursday during the Normandy Invasion show made that announcement. That was a surprise to most of us, but an announcement that Norm says was his decision to make. And we are so honored to have the old school master of the craft with us tonight. Norm Hitzkus is our guest. On Thursday, he announced that he would soon be retiring from the ticket. Friday is his last day on the Normandy Invasion. 48 years or so in DFW radio and TV, roughly half of that at the ticket, still going strong at age 78. But Norm, why is now the right time to uh, to retire? I, I think you don't want to be carried out, Mike, first of all. I mean, all of us are going to end our careers. And what you'd like to end them on is your own terms. I'm, I'm healthy. I'm happy. I still feel I'm Honestly, I don't mean this as a joke. I still feel I'm pretty good. And I don't want two years from now to have people say, uh, he's just hanging on. You know, and besides the next chapters out there, the next chapter of travel with my wife Mary, uh, with a podcast will start in September called Just Wandering, Just Wondering, which will be five days a week. And and some time to just put the feet up on the footstool. That's fantastic, Norm. Yeah, you, you, you say you're retiring. It doesn't sound like much of a retirement to me. Yeah, you're still going to do some things, like the podcasting, so you're keeping up with the times, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Norm, part of your early career in Dallas was, in fact, spent right here at this TV mm -hmm. station. What do you remember about those early days? Uh, it was January 10th. 1972, when I walked into this building, Mike and I like to joke there's some original equipment still out there from when I was here 51 years ago. Uh, I walked in here, I didn't have any idea how to do TV. A fellow named Eddie Barker, who was a giant in this business, hired me along with several others to try to make his newsroom a little younger. And you learned on the fly. And I'd been to graduate school at the University of Texas. I learned more in three months from Eddie Barker than I learned in years at that graduate school. Eddie was smart and he was tough. And he would be very pointed when you did something wrong. <laughs> Funny how that works. Yeah, there's some Eddie Barker <laughs> stories that still uh, float around in this building, uh, that's for sure. Radio ended up working out okay for you, though, as you went uh, from television to radio. First morning drive sports talk show of any major market in the nation back on Cliff in the 80s and then moved on to the ticket, which was not a terribly easy adjustment. You mentioned that when you announced your retirement the other day because they did things in a different way than you were used to doing them, so you had to... I guess adjust your style a little bit and they had to adjust some things for you. And they still do some things differently <laughs> from what I do. But <laughs> that station made me a better sports talk show host. It did. It widened me out. I still love straight sports talk, but I now like to laugh a lot more than I used to. Uh, the advent of the internet has changed this business so it's crazy. Now you go on the air, and you do too. And your audience, a lot of them know way more about what you're talking about than you do. Yeah. <laughs> they know a lot more. Not many of them know more than you do. Norm, yeah. <laughs> Norm uh, you know, so many young, you know, aspiring journalists who want to get into radio broadcast, you have a lot of older people who may tell them, no, don't get into that business. Why would you tell some young and up-and-coming broadcasters to get into that, into that business? Why would you encourage people still to get into radio, even though sports radio is something that's hard to break into nowadays? If you're interested in radio, radio becomes addictive. It becomes a life. Don't figure to make a lot of money when you start into it. I mean, there are all these careers out there where you can make 150000 your first year out of graduate school and things like that. That's not radio, believe me. But it'll get in your blood. And I think, I think you all 
understand this fully. If you're going to have a career in radio, you've got to work at it. And that's true of all of us. When we leave school, the only thing that differentiates us from the personal competition is, can you outwork them? And I think that's the key to the ticket. I know it sounds like we're wacko and we're knuckleheads and all those things, but so much work goes into what happens on the air. And even some of the wacky stuff, work went into that. <laughs> it's hard to believe it, but it, it is. And I, I've loved this life. I've loved this city. I've loved these fans. I honestly think the fans here may be amongst the very best in the country. There's no, no viciousness in this market. And there's no, I hate to say like LA, oh, Frank and Jaja, what time did the game begin? <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I, I really like this place. The fans are intelligent. Uh, they, they will bow up some when they don't like what's going on. Um, they're informed. It's a really good place. Well, what am I telling you guys? Well, no viciousness in this market. You haven't seen some of Sam's emails. <laughs> we'll uh, come back and I talk. I got some gems in there. <laughs> some actual sports talk with uh, the great Norvitskis.